What's going on everybody? It's the Black Speed and I'm here for what we call a simple review. Now if you don't have a lot of experience playing an RPG roguelike with turn-based combat and the survival elements of Fallout, then you're in for something special. Dead Age 2 is finally out and it's the sequel to the very successful Dead Age. Dead Age 2 does a lot of things right while there are obvious levels of growth you'll notice as you play along. The world of Dead Age 2 is a large one, literally speaking when you see the scope of the map. Along this map is a rich cast of characters with a great story to tell. You start out with a tutorial, which in my opinion is way too long, but there is a lot to learn about this game, so I can see why it was warranted. The tutorial may take you up to an hour, and it goes across several in-game days to make sure you understand various fundamentals. What's unfortunate is there's no way you're going to remember everything, so you will find yourself wondering what it is you actually learned. Once the game takes you out of that, you are ready to see what the humans have been trying to tell you. Now the story is somewhat incomplete, and we're still waiting on it to be fully fleshed out, but what we are served up is pretty interesting. You feel like you were planted right in the world of The Walking Dead, the seriousness of their tones and all. The problem isn't necessarily with the story itself, but how the story is being told. You want to be so engulfed in the world of Dead H2 that you're sometimes pulled out of it with the non-stop barrage of clicking you have to do to advance the story. There are so many text boxes you'll read through, it's almost as if you're playing a graphic novel than a video game itself. This wouldn't be so bad if they weren't required at every turn. The parts that you do read tell the story of a captivating community of factions and other survivors just looking to make it to another day. Whether you run into a smuggler, get ambushed by a zombie, or try to impress a soldier right down the street, there's always dialogue to be read and a story to be told. During the story, you get a crash course on how the quest system works. You have several different categories of quests you can undertake, different types of quests within those categories, and various ways of earning money and faction allegiance. Although the quests are varied, fleshed out, and robust, you will find yourself somewhat frustrated with the amount of juggling between quests that can happen. Furthermore, if you're not careful, you will almost bottleneck yourself with a timed quest that can be offered if you take on too many at one time. Thankfully, you have a lot of freedom and flexibility in the amount of quests you take and which kinds you take. Just be careful to stay focused on those story and camp missions if you want to have a chance at surviving this bleak existence. During the initial quests, you'll learn about a huge element of this game base building. The base building is the backbone of Dead H2 and where you find yourself most of the time when not out traversing the map. You'll assign your camp inhabitants to work the gardens, build new buildings for the community, making sure that everyone has a job and every upgrade is being met. There is even a day and night system that plays a part in the base building. Usually you'll spend the day gathering resources from quests and fighting zombies and then spend the night assigning some of all of your people to various rooms in order to upgrade, craft, and build. This is a system that works fairly well and can be somewhat addicting if you're into town management simulations. The meat of this game, however, is the combat, and that's where Dead H2 truly shines. There is so much to be said here and so many variables that go into crafting the perfect strategy for even the simplest of zombie fights. There are melee weapons, range weapons, status effects, a wealth of skills, a roll system that triggers what attacks you can do, buffs, ammo management, and even ammo manipulation. There are many possibilities with the battles you run into that it's almost more satisfying to just level your characters rather than hear what they have to say about it. There are definite advantages of using certain weapons over another, such as a shotgun over an assault rifle, or even certain pieces of ammo that cost much less but yet somehow benefits you more. But these are shortcomings you will learn to maneuver and accept for what it is. You may not be able to build the ultimate character that you want, but you will certainly love the one that you have. Ultimately, Dead H2 tries to do a lot of things right and it mostly succeed, but sometimes having too much of a good thing can even apply to gaming. Dead H2 wants to do so many things that it can sometimes fall short on others. You'll love the combat system, but not enjoy all the skills you have to keep up with, which can create an imbalance. You'll enjoy questing across the map, but you will then realize you're overwhelmed with the amount of quests and forced to return to base to deal with the horde before you know it. There are just so many nuances to the game that it can be hard to manage them all, and that's definitely going to frustrate some. The good news is that this game is early access, and there are still a ton of patches, updates, and reworks on the horizon. I have no doubt that Dead H2 can be the game we all know it can be, and one day soon, the world will be one worth visiting.